All right, friends, I think we're on here and it says we are live. Welcome back to another live session. It's Sunday evening. I'm Mike Munzler. Super excited and grateful that you're here. Today, we're going to talk about autophagy and I like to just dive right into it because I know in these live sessions, a lot of you tune in later. A lot of you come back and watch the replay, things like that. So I say thank you for tuning in here live. I'm getting like a summer type head cold. I've been traveling a ton, which is part of why I wanted to hop on here and just kind of check in with you guys and gals and just say what's up. Hope you're having a great summer. Hope you had a great 4th of July holiday. If you do celebrate 4th of July, um, you know, I've been traveling a lot. So I was at KetoCon. I spoke last, was it about 11 days ago in Austin. And one of the most common questions that came up after I gave a talk about fasting, exercise, and enhancing autophagy for ketogenic dieters was people said, you know, like, how long does it take to fast to induce autophagy? So that's the question that we're going to address here. If you like this content, hit that like button. That lets us know that we should do more videos like this, more live streams. If there's any issues with the live stream, I'm gonna uh, check into my feed as sometimes this does happen here. And there's a bunch of you all here. What's up guys? All right, so let's just dive right into it. I have a bunch of papers and let me just drop here on the feed. Um, in my Wirecast software, da, 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 there you go. Here's one of the papers. So uh, paper number one, and let me just pause. We've talked about this quite a bit and I'm getting a little feedback. Um, all right, I shouldn't hear that anymore. Um, I, uh, one of the things we've talked about at length, starting back in January of this year, 2019 that is, is how there's a lot of data in animal models when it comes to enhancing autophagy. There's a lot of data in humans when it comes to enhancing autophagy by way of exercise. Let me pause here, friends, and I just want to underscore this one point, and it, it gets into the studies. Oh, I'm out of focus. All right, there we go. Man, my camera is so sensitive. How long was that of focus? So annoying. So what I was trying to say there, friends, is there's a ton of data in humans showing that exercise enhances autophagy. Okay, We have, obviously, a lot of data in animal models showing that fasting enhances autophagy, but not too many human clinical studies um, looking at all the different times of fasting and so forth uh, and so forth outside of this one and there's another study that I'm going to get to very soon. So in this particular study, what the researchers looked at is 12 hours and 72 hours and they looked at autophagy markers in muscle tissue, which I want to pause here. Let me just pause here and just emphasize one thing that I think gets glossed over on the internet autophagy is very tissue specific, okay? And what does that mean? That means that it's not just like this on or off switch that when you, and, or it's not just the singular process, right? We have micro autophagy, macro autophagy, we have chaperone mediated autophagy. We know a lot more about macro autophagy than we do with these other forms of autophagy, but there's a lot of tissue specificity, okay? So we know that the liver is a key organ where autophagy is upregulated in the context of fasting and exercise. We know the skeletal muscle is a key organ where autophagy is increased upon exercise and also fasting. We know now, thanks to researchers at Scripps University, they recently just figured out that in the neurons, autophagy is upregulated after short duration fasting. We also know the pancreas. We also know the immune system. What other tissue type am I forgetting? Um, liver, immune system, muscle, brain. I think I've covered, well, obviously, probably the lung tissue. Oh, the enterocytes within the GI tract. That's something that is really unique, and there's some autophagy SNPs within the small intestine that is linked with Crohn's disease. So autophagy is very selective, it's very specific. And so it's not just like one big autophagy. So what I want you guys to think about, and gals, right now, when you're thinking about how long should I fast, I need you to think about how long should I fast to increase autophagy, that is. My summer cold is affecting my brain, evidently. You need to think about your goals and your health history. How long have you not been fasting? How long have you been sedentary? How long have you been an athlete? You need to consider these things and consider what your goals are. It's very important that, you know, there's there's no one size fits all. I was listening to a great podcast this morning when I was driving in Idaho with Jason Fung and Peter Atia. It's a wonderful podcast. After I finish this live, I'll link it below about how in clinical medicine, healthcare practitioners really like to customize things. So there's not just one way to go about it. And I, I really want you all to think about, okay, what are your health goals? What's your prior health history? That is going to govern whether or not, you know, you should fast for 12 hours every day, 16 hours every day, 36 hours one day a week, 36 hours two days a week, seven days a month, whatever it is. You, The degree of severity that you have uh, in terms of 
imbalances in your body will govern or dictate how long and how frequently you need to fast to enhance autophagy, okay? Now, what will also dictate that is how physically trained you are. Here's a clinical study right here. Oop, oop. <laughs> there we go. It's been a while since I've done a live like this. But if you look here, these are, let me move this up. These are, oh, come on. All right. I get out of focus so easy on this camera. So this is interesting. This is autophagy biomarkers. Now, this is the UNCLE protein. Um, I call it UNCLE as an acronym just to help. UNLC1, I believe, is the uh, short derivative. Um, when it comes to macroautophagy, what we're doing is we're taking the autophagosome forms and starts collecting a bunch of intracellular debris. And uh, some of these proteins are needed for that, what they call invagination of intracellular debris, damaged or aggregated proteins, misfolded proteins, damaged organelles, things like that. So researchers have figured out these different, you know, uh, key intracellular molecules that are involved in the autophagosome formation, which ultimately then binds to the lysosome. And so that's what we're seeing here is uh, the differences in this key uncle what I call uncle biomarker. And it turns out that in trained athletes, as you can see right on the diagram here, there's a difference, that, you know, untrained athletes in the skeletal muscle, that is, uh, I shouldn't say untrained athletes, untrained individuals, you know, don't tend to initiate autophagy after fasting as profound as a trained individuals. And this particular study was just a 36 hour fasting study. Uh, and so that's what's, I think, kind of interesting for all of us trying to figure this out. Look, and this gets to the crux of the question that many people have, the title of this video. And let me just clear this layer because it's, it's mildly annoying. This is the, you can tune out of this video after this one little small thing that I need you to understand, okay? Um, autophagy is occurring in various tissues at various times in different individuals all the time. So if you're listening to this right now, wherever you are in the world, there's a chance that autophagy is occurring in your fat cells, autophagy is occurring at basal levels within your immune system, autophagy is probably occurring at some, in some cells within your muscle tissue, your fat tissue, your pancreas. It's, it's occurring probably all the time in most people. It's just a varying degree of proportions. So that's what we need to understand. And one thing that I want to clarify, I hear a lot of people talk about autophagy and they talk about chewing up cells. Okay, You need to understand autophagy is an intracellular phenomenon. Cellular senescence, apoptosis, preprogrammed cell death, that are cells dying. Autophagy is inside the cell. And this is important for you to understand because this is why it's so hard to measure. This is why you can't just take a blood test and say, oh, my autophagy and my muscle is upregulated. You need to look at these intracellular biomarkers like the LCB3, like the uncle one various proteins. Re keep that in mind. Autophagy is intracellular. Okay. Now, it's just important to understand that. Does that change how you fast or think about this? Maybe not really, but I think it's important that in the so-called integrative medicine, clinical nutrition realm, we use the proper terminology because some people are saying that autophagy is chewing up cells when that's not how it works. Now, autophagy could be regulated to pre-programmed cell death and, and cellular senescence through its crosstalk with mitochondria, but it's important that we understand that it's an intracellular phenomenon. So getting back to some of these studies. Now, one particular study, you know, and I'll just leave this one up here right now so you can see this, um, showed that just time-restricted feeding, and we reviewed this video three, four, no, it was June 7th, I think, when we did this video, because that's when the study came out, I think June 5th, um, and it was, in, uh, I believe it was researchers at Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, what they figured out is that just by time-restricted feeding, biomarkers of genes related to autophagy were increased. So just by compressing your feeding window, not even, excuse me, not even changing the food that you eat, not even counting calories, not even counting carbs, none of that, by just compressing that feeding window, that positively and favorably affects autophagy-related genes. So keep that in mind. If you're relatively healthy, if you eat keto and you exercise, you balance your sleep, like you live a healthy lifestyle, I there's enough data now in humans to suggest that just compressing your feeding window is probably enough to enhance autophagy to help you meet your health goals. This is where we need to take another pause here. Now, who is autophagy enhancement important for? Well, we know that as we age, autophagy goes down. 
Okay, so it's it's inversely correlated or uh, like this, right? It's hard for me to do this like this. Uh, so as you age, autophagy goes down, right? So the people that are over 50, 60, 70, like as you get older, you might need to fast for longer periods of time or more frequently. What does that look like? I don't know what your goals are. I don't know what your health history is. I don't know how long you've been eating healthy or unhealthy. I don't know your exercise. Only you know that, okay? So the older you are, we know that autophagy is probably slowed down. So you need to be more vigilant and intentional about enhancing autophagy through exercise, through compressing your feeding window and periodic fasting and potentially supplements, herbs and botanicals, which we'll get to in a moment. So uh, I've been really um, talking for a long time and I just want to check in here. Uh, really appreciate you all being here. Thanks for being here. E e ER, thanks for being here. Uh, Mayosa, um, we got a bunch of people on here and uh, you know, I just like to uh, just check in, make sure we're here guys and gals. So if you're enjoying this content, hit that like button. I have a summer cold, I've been traveling quite a bit and so that's why my nose is a little bit stuffy but it's been a little while since we've done a video like this and I just want to hop on and just say what's up, hello and uh, let me just see here if we have some, some friends on with us uh, at present. Wow, we got quite a few of you on which is really, really cool. So grateful that you guys are here and gals. So. I'm hoping that I'm conveying this in a clear manner so that you understand this. And for those of you that are just coming on right now, let me just rephrase and paraphrase so that you don't have to ask people, uh, you know, when does autophagy kick in? How long do I need to fast? Do all these, oh, come on, focus, man. <laughs> this camera is, is quite a crack up. So what we know is that time-restricted feeding, and we know we have studies showing that at 36 hours and at 72 hours, we see a top 72 hours and 36 hours respectively of fasting, we see autophagy increased in muscle tissue. This is important to keep in mind, okay? Autophagy is very tissue specific. Some higher autophagy is not always better, okay? So for example, in adipocytes, in fat tissue, in overweight individuals, autophagy is upregulated. That's an adaptation to help the fat tissue with necrosis, with hypoxia. It's not necessarily a favorable thing. Okay, but it's research has shown that autophagy in skeletal muscle is probably favorable. Autophagy within the liver is probably favorable. Autophagy within the pancreas is probably favorable. Likewise for the brain. Why in the brain? Because we can accumulate aggregated and misfolded proteins that are linked with mild cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease, and Parkinson's disease. So this is another thing that you want to keep in mind is the brain is uniquely susceptible to misfolded and damaged proteins and also mitochondrial dysfunction. So autophagy upregulation within the brain could be very favorable. So we know that exercise, we know the fasting between 36 and 72 hours enhances autophagy. Now, what does that mean for you? How do you figure this stuff out? Again, this is where you need to watch the interview that I did with Dr. Peter Atia and learn a little bit more about how he customizes this, number one. Number two, I think you need to revisit your health history. For example, let's just, because I don't have another client that I'm working with that comes to mind, what is use myself? Okay, I don't necessarily have a lot of cancer in my family, um, but I do have this tumor biomarker that's elevated that I've told you guys about, alpha feeder protein. It's associated with hepatocellular carcinoma, liver cancers, things like that. So for me, I want to enhance autophagy within my liver should anything be problematic due to this persistent elevation of this tumor marker called alpha fetoprotein, AFP, that I've known about for three years and that's why I'm so passionate about this topic and helping you better understand this topic. I know that time-restricted feeding, exercise, and periodic prolonged fasting intermittent starvation, what we refer to as intermittent fasting, is going to help me enhance autophagy, okay? So what do I personally do? I exercise at least six days a week. I walk at least 15 to 20,000 steps every single day. I do intermittent fasting every single day, at least 16 hours, sometimes 18 hours of a fast. And every Monday, I fast for 24 to 36 hours, depending upon the day. And every quarter, I fast for three days. That's just what I personally do. Is that what you should do? Please don't copy what I do. You need to figure out what works for you. 
I don't know your liver enzymes. I don't know your triglycerides. I don't know your fasting glucose. I don't know your postprandial glucose. I don't know your ketones. I don't know your cancer predisposition. I don't even know your genetics. I don't know any of that. That's where, friends, we need to listen to our own intuition. We need to do our lab work. We need to work with a healthcare practitioner to figure some of this stuff out. And so I would encourage you to do that. But again, for those of you all that are just hopping on here, what I want you to realize is one study showed that autophagy was increased in humans after 72 hours of fasting. You might be curious to know, but how much was this autophagy increased? It was only 30%. I mean, to be honest, I'm a little disappointed about that. I would have thought it would have been much higher. 72 hours is a pretty long time to fast, at least for me. I know I start to lose sleep after that. Uh, This particular study showed that 36 hours of fasting was sufficient to enhance autophagy within skeletal muscle. So again, keep that in mind. This isn't a body-wide phenomenon necessarily, at least that we can measure at this particular moment in time. What a lot of scientists look at when they look at autophagy associated with fasting and exercise is they look at one specific tissue type so that they can measure this. Some science that I've looked at looks at white blood cell uh, biomarkers of autophagy initiation. Other studies are looking at uh, Purkinje neurons within the brain. This particular study looked at muscle tissue. I've seen animal model studies that have looked at pancreatic tissue, that have looked at the immune system and so forth. So... Again, just to clarify so that we're all on the same page. Autophagy is occurring in probably all of our different tissue types. Right now, as we watch this video, it's just a matter of proportions. This is an intracellular phenomenon. It's not this Pac-Man thing where cells are degrading other cells. It's an intracellular phenomenon where intracellular appliances like your endoplasmic reticulum, your Golgi apparatus, your mitochondria, your ribosomes, all that are being degraded. Even glycogen and breaking down fats within the cell. This is intracellular. That's why it's so hard to measure. It's occurring at basal levels in most tissues. Not all cancers. This is important. A lot of people think that every single cancer type is autophagy selective, but it's not. There's certain tissues that are much certain cancer types and I, don't, I haven't gone into that research yet, but we're gonna talk about it in our upcoming Autophagy Enhancer Masterclass that I'll tell you about shortly. Not all cancer types are autophagy sensitive, which I think is important. Now, there's a point of probably diminishing returns and we don't know when that is. We don't know if this is three weeks fasting, maybe a month, I, I'm not sure. But you know, remember that when you're inducing autophagy, you're creating this invagination process within cells. It's a double membrane invagination. And so it requires nutrition. It requires phospholipids, probably omega-3 fats. It requires different proteins probably, you know, to, to make, you know, this lysosome and to make these autophagosomes. So, you know, I, I want to, you to understand that prolonged fasting all the time, probably not healthy either. Because I see so many people say, you know, on this Metabolic Monday and bless their hearts, they're wanting to, you know, fast and they're doing great at 24 hours. So then they're like, I'm going 96, I'm going 124 hours, I'm, I'm going seven days, not whatever. And it's like, okay, if you have diabetic retinopathy, if you have kidney failure, if you have a necrosis from a, you know, poor, poor blood circulation at the end of your foot from diabetes, I understand going the extra mile to ensure that autophagy is totally enhanced. But if you're ordinarily healthy, uh, you know, I think that being a little bit more consistent about when you fast and maybe not going for prolonged all the time probably is probably better. But that's just my personal approach. Whew. All right. We've been rocking 18 minutes. I haven't even said hi. I haven't even like checked in. I, let's do this. So I'm going to pop this out. Um, pop out chat so I can say hello. How we doing, guys? Again, Guys, gals, friends, if you enjoy these live streams on Sunday, hit that like button. I'm so sorry that I didn't post a video this last week. Um, to be honest, my dad got in a major bike accident, and I posted that on on YouTube a uh, picture. So I was offline for a while, and uh, it was just crazy to kind of put things into perspective, you know, um, seeing you know, someone that you really care about with chest tubes and in a hospital, and their complexion is gray, and all this, so that's why I haven't posted a video. But I really, I love you guys. I love you know that you share this content. I, I love all the feedback and and you know learning from each other and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, just want to hop on 
and just kind of say hello and stuff like that, guys. Um, a bunch of other papers that I'm collecting here. So just a small plug, um, you know, how I kind of support this channel, the growth of this, of this channel is e-classes. And these e-classes are so much fun. And we get on a uh, live webinar, usually on Wednesdays at 5 p.m., but coming up, it's the 10th of this month, so July 10th, Wednesday, is our round two of the Autophagy Enhancer Masterclass. So we had over 100 people that went through that in March. A ton of fun. And so the whole point of this is to help add a little bit more clarity in science and practical application to this whole hot topic of autophagy and its associated health benefits. And so links are below. I would love to have you as a part of it. Like if you haven't done a live class before, talk about like, like, you know, like I said, every night reading tons of research, synthesizing this, giving you guys the slides and really kind of sharing the practical takeaways. So it's only 79 bucks um, and registration closes this Wednesday if you're watching this. So uh, anyway, um, Michael, thanks for being here. Um, hey, they're from Florida. Yeah, dad's getting better. So yeah, Rob Bacon. So it was it was a pedal bike. Yeah, it's crazy. So my dad races bikes at 69 years old. You know, he um, he got me into cycling and stuff like that. And uh, it was just a, a fluke thing. But you know, I just wanted to give a shout out to my friend Frank Yosa. I I bought these ketone aid ketone ester. The reason why I want to share this with you is my dad hit his head pretty good, and he couldn't remember after the bike wreck like how he fell, what happened. And I was diving into the research on nutritional ketosis and traumatic brain injury. And a lot of research actually came up in the context of fasting. And actually, it's funny. I mean, it's probably an autophagy-mediated mechanism where people have a TBI, some sort of blunt force trauma to the brain, and a way that the brain can help to clear up some of those damaged cells and or damaged cellular components like the mitochondria and other intracellular appliances, I call them. Organelles, obviously, is the, the technical jargonistic word when we talk about appliances. But imagine your cells like a house, right? Inside your house, you have an oven, you have a refrigerator, you have a furnace, hot water heater, things like that. Well, your cells, all 11 trillion of your cells, have these different appliances and these appliances within those cells become damaged over time and our ability to degrade them repair them and so forth that is mediated by autophagy and what happens is as we age autophagy goes down and so that's why we're unable to repair damaged mitochondria as effectively and this manifests clinically uh, with memory loss mild cognitive impairment impaired glucose tolerance it happens as a function of aging and this is why i think it's very important for people to fast more frequently probably more often as they age of course considering what medicines are on health risks all that sort of good stuff and and everything like that but anyway long story short you know um knowing that my dad hit his head i ordered i got these things overnighted these uh, ketone esters and um He's, it was hard, he's not a big fan of taking a bunch of supplements and stuff. He doesn't take any drugs or medicines. Um, but after giving him just half a bottle, man, I noticed his word retrieval, clarity, everything like that, guys. So uh, look, we're all susceptible to traumatic brain injury, to concussions, to head trauma, blunt force trauma. And that's where I think the power of this lifestyle medicine that we've been talking about up to, up to now with regards to fasting, with regards to you know, driving down carbohydrates, getting more good fats. Ketones have seemingly a protective effect in the brain. And we know that autophagy also affects the neurons in a favorable manner. So anyway, I just um, keep that in mind. If you know someone that hits their head, come back to this video, save this video, um, maybe email it to yourself or whatever so that you'll remember, um, you know, kind of what to do. And I'm going to do a whole other video because I'm, I'm still diving into this research. I think it's very fascinating because seeing how the doctors in the emergency room kind of handled my dad after he hit his head they were just looking for a contusion they were looking for like a they did a ct scan of his head they were just making sure he didn't have any an, a hemorrhage or internal bleeding and once they ruled that out there was no further discussion about traumatic head injury tbi concussion like dietary change they gave him graham crackers like it was crazy to me to think that 
with all the nutritional data that we have and the data that I was able to pull up while in the emergency room, well, not in the, but after getting home from that, you know, I was, I was on my computer all night doing research. There's a ton of research for a traumatic brain injury in the realm of nutrition, and that wasn't even discussed in a, you know, reasonable hospital setting where there's money and resources. So crazy things, uh, friends. So, um, all right, let's let's check out the chat. Where 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 are you at here? I'm looking at my computer just so I can, you know, see the chat here. Um, Alex has a great question. Is fasting safe if you're a diabetic? Well, talk to Dr. Jason Fung. We've had a lot of interviews with Dr. Jason Fung. Remember, he is a board certified nephrologist, meaning that he treats pretty much a lot of end stage kidney disease, mostly from diabetic complications. He fasts his diabetic patients all the time. Now, you might need to adjust your medication. You might need to be mindful of the fact that if you're brand new to this, you could have hypoglycemia, reactive hypoglycemia. So you want to be mindful of this. So this is why I suggest start slow and go low. So start compressing your feeding window. Start fasting for 18 hours a day or, or 16 hours a day or even 14 hours a day and just slowly improve upon that. Then maybe do one day a week like a Monday, Metabolic Monday. We have tons of people now that are doing this every Monday, just fasting for 24 hours. Start doing that consistently. Now, why fast every week? Well, again, if we look at the data on autophagy, where autophagy seems to be most malleable is within our muscle tissue and our liver. And we know that these are the two organs that also adapt to physical activity. So I feel like some regularity, some consistency with autophagy and fasting can help our body make the adaptations needed and necessary. So hopefully that, that kind of helps there. Um, Let's see here. What up, Mike? Hey there. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, can you do a bookshelf tour? Uh, this has got me intrigued. Yeah, I could do that. Probably not tonight, but sure, man. But anything you guys want. Like, you know, I love backyard chickens. You know, I love pigs. I mean, I, I, I'm we're working on a garden video. But yeah, we can do a bookshelf tour. That that totally works. Um, Melinda says hospital food is terrible. I agree with you 100%. Um, yeah. Um, Georgette says, get a continuous glucose monitor and you're good to fast. That was in regards to, I believe, Andrew's question about is fasting safe for diabetes. So, yeah, uh, Valentin says, yeah, hitting my head is my worst fear. And I would wholeheartedly agree, you know, with that. It is it is super scary, um, the fact that, you know, head trauma and, and stuff. And, and to be honest, friends, that's kind of why I'm interested in keto and autophagy. I think I've told you guys this on and off, you know, but um, I hit my head a lot when I was a kid. Uh, I had an older sibling who was really rough on me, would throw me downstairs, make me box. We got into a ton of fights uh, and uh, I was exposed to drugs and alcohol at a very early age. And so um, I'm really worried about my cognition uh, and, and preserving that throughout my lifespan. And so that's why I take this stuff so seriously. That's why I take the science so seriously. That's why this channel is like, you know, it's a passion of mine to share with you guys this research because um, if you would have known me when I was 12, 13, 14, or at the peak of my dysfunction at 15 when I finally got arrested for the second time, my brain was totally jacked up, man. I mean, my ability to communicate, to string together words, to look people in the eyes, memory was totally screwed up. And so I feel like I'm like constantly making up for lost time uh, for that, you know, five year stint in my adolescence, which, um, you know, I feel like I've done a decent job at recovering from that, but there's still things I got to improve upon. And so that's why I take this stuff so seriously. So, um, yeah, anyway, anyway, um, honest AF says, what's your IG again? Yeah. Uh, metabolic underscore Mike, or just search Mike Mutzel, M U T Z E L. I'm on Instagram. If you're, if, if you listen to these live videos and you're on Instagram, send me a DM and just say, Hey Mike, I saw you on this live on Sunday or whatever. And, uh, I'd love to connect with you. So, um, so friends, just a few things. Uh, I'm gonna end off here. You guys know that we have a supplement company, full disclosure, um, but one of the fasting memetics that's out there is called berberine hydrochloride. Berberine works by improving blood sugar health, and it has been shown to increase levels of AMPK, adenosine monophosphate kinase, which is a key interest switch that affects autophagy. So if you're 
already doing things, you want to bring it up a notch or take your fasting and potentially autophagy enhancement to the next level, we do have an autophagy enhancer bundle. Links are below to our website, myoscience.com. Now, why do I say this, guys and gals? Number one, I want you to focus on whole real foods first. Do not buy any supplements if you can't afford healthy whole real food, grass-fed, pasture-raised, get some backyard chickens, grow your own vegetables, things like that. But I know a lot of you are already doing that and you're looking for an edge and that's where supplements come in. I only formulate and sell supplements that I personally take myself. I've been doing this since 2006 and so I'm offering you some really high quality things based upon you know, the raw material vendors that I know at manufacturing facilities that I've actually been to and audited. So this isn't just some wonky, custom, you know, one-off contract manufacturer that does, the, the people that we work with make really, really cool ingredients, super high quality. So berberine hydrochloride at 500 milligrams per day, plus we have some other botanicals in here known to enhance autophagy. Now, can we measure autophagy in humans? Not this time if you don't have a research laboratory. But what we can see is changes in the glucose to ketone index. We can look at you know various uh, improvements in other biomarkers that you can readily measure. And I'm telling you, when you start tinkering around with this stuff, you'll be as convinced as I am that it's effective. Now, so this these are kind of, again, berberine falls into this category of botanicals called calorie restriction memetics. And so these, there's a lot of like resveratrol is one. Um, there's alpha GPC, I believe. There's a lot of these different natural compounds, quercetin, that fall into these, these categories. And these botanicals affect the body's stress response pathways and AMPK and, and others, possibly mTOR inhibition. So as I, as I mentioned, focus your money on whole real food, gym memberships, enhancing your relationships with the people that you care about. But if you're looking for next level stuff, you can add in berberine and also omega-3 fats. Why omega-3 fats? Because think about autophagy. It's this constant invagination of a double cell membrane vehicle, vessel within your cell that's taking out trash and breaking down organelles. And so we know that cell membrane fluidity, we know that a lot of the, the plasticity associated with plasma membranes we need omega-3 fats from that. And unless you're spending a ton of money on grass-fed beef, pastured eggs, grass-fed liver, stuff like that, uh, even then you may not be getting enough omega-3 fats. Uh, unless you, If you hunt for your own food and you get wild game and fish, you probably don't need to worry about this. But for most of you that are shopping at major grocery stores, even some of the pasture-raised grass-fed beef doesn't have the, the omega-3 you know, EPA, DHA levels compared to what animals used to have in animals in the wild. So I, I'm a fan of supplementing in that regard. And so links for that are below. Um, so anyway, friends, um, yeah, just wanted to kind of hop on here, just say hello. Hope you had an awesome holiday. I'm super grateful that you guys are and gals are here right now. Um, Sorry for the head cold. You know, I'm not, I normally don't have like a stuffy nose and things like that, but uh, it's amazing how like uh, psychological stress can affect your immune system. And just knowing that like my dad was in the hospital and tubes coming out of his chest and all this sort of stuff, I was like, man, that, that was really psychologically stressful. So, um, anyway, super excited that you're here and hope you have an awesome week. Got a bunch of new videos uh, posting. So, if you're not yet subscribed, please do so. And, Definitely tune in to the Autophagy Enhancer Masterclass if you can. Links are below. We have a ton of fun with these masterclasses and it's a way to like keep you accountable. Honestly, it keeps me accountable too. And so that's why I spend so much time studying and researching and making slides and synthesizing and curating content so that our paid members like really get a good value. And, you know, I mean, I don't know if, if autophagy is even being taught now in nutrition classes. I mean, I, you know, I got my master's degree in nutrition and I didn't learn anything about autophagy. So we're trying to share stuff that's like on the cutting edge. And so if, if you're one of those type of people, I'd love to have you on board. And uh, anyway, guys, hey there, John from Auburn, Washington. What's up? I flew over Washington today coming back from uh, Boise. Anyway, um, hope you guys have a good one. We'll catch you on the next video. All right. 31 minutes. I gotta get better at shortening these. All right, guys. Adios. Thanks for tuning in.